New York City has one of the best natural harbors in the world. To understand this is to understand why and how New York City became the wealthy and powerful city it has become. And the center of New York's shipping activities in the 18th and 19th centuries was right here on the East River at South Street Seaport. And for all you Seinfeld fans out there, yes, the same river Kramer swam in. What is that smell? That's East River. It is right here where New York's rise to greatness begins and the vision of the old Dutch explorers was about to become a reality. New York would rise to become one of the greatest centers of shipping and commerce the world has ever seen. And along the way, New Yorkers would show the world how to transform nature, obliterate geography, and alter time and space itself. No longer bound by the constraints of the British, New York merchants were now free at last to develop markets of their own. And indeed they did, swiftly reaching out to the ends of the earth with remarkable speed, creating a new kind of commercial empire. In 1807, Robert Fulton launched the world's first practical steamboat off the west side of Manhattan, which forever freed the shipping industry from the requirements of the wind and eventually cut the time it took to cross the Atlantic Ocean from three weeks down to 10 days. In 1817, a shipping company called the Black Ball Line came up with a startlingly simple idea that would revolutionize commerce around the world. The owners announced that they would have a set schedule of departures on a certain day each month throughout the year. Regardless of the weather and regardless of how much merchandise there was to ship. This is no small thing. Up until then, ships would linger in the harbor until the weather was acceptable, or the crew was organized, or the captain was ready, or the hold was full. But on the bitterly cold morning of January 5th, 1818, at precisely 10 a.m., the captain of the Black Ball Line gave orders for his ship to cast off from Pier 23 at South Street into a driving snowstorm with only a few barrels of apples and flour on board, along with eight passengers and a mailbag. It was the first scheduled maritime departure in history and the beginning of the world's first shipping line, a regular service running back and forth month after month. For the first time, this allowed businessmen to make firm commitments, confident that their goods would arrive quote-unquote on time, a new phrase that had made its way into the language. New York merchants invented the idea of a schedule, and within six years, New York City dominated the nation's trade shipping more goods than Philadelphia, Boston, Baltimore, and Savannah combined. Soon, a third of all the merchant tonnage in the world was sailing from South Street, whose two-mile stretch of piers, counting houses, supply houses, sailmakers, taverns, brothels, boarding houses, and shipyards had become a frenzy of non-stop activity. With 14 major shipyards, New York City had become the largest shipbuilding center in the country. Today, while quite a few buildings remain from old New York's days as a bustling seaport, the area has suffered much since the devastation of Superstorm Sandy back in 2012, when parts of the area were under six feet of water. Continuing down uh, Water Street here in South Street Seaport, we're going to make our way to our next stop, which is the famous Bridge Cafe. Just up ahead here on the corner, the waterline of New York came right up to this point many years ago. So just imagine this maroon colored clapboard building sitting on the very edge of the water, filled with sailors and that kind of rowdy seaport crowd. Here on the corner of Water and Dover Streets stands the Bridge Cafe. This is the oldest establishment in New York City that has been continuously run as a tavern. Under a number of different owners and different names, it has been here in this building since 1794. One previous tenant was The Hole in the Wall, operated by one-armed Charlie Monell. An 1847 visitor to The Hole in the Wall would have had to contend with Monell's two barmaid slash bouncers, Kate Flannery and Gallus Mag. The latter was said to have a habit of biting off the earlobes of especially unruly customers. 
Charlie kept a jar of pickled earlobes over the bar. Unfortunately, the Bridge Cafe closed after the devastation of Superstorm Sandy in 2012. Just a few doors down from the Bridge Cafe is another beautifully restored building from the same era and was known as the Rat Pit when New York's seaport catered to the thirsty and rowdy sailor population. This once fully operational lighthouse here at one of the entrances to the historic seaport was dedicated in 1913 as a memorial to the sinking of the Titanic exactly one year after the tragic event. It was originally placed atop the nearby Siemens Church Institute, but was eventually removed and placed here in 1976.